What's up guys, Coach Alex here with Professor Andre Galval at Electron Performance and we're excited to show you a workout from the Grapplers Code. Yeah, so we've been working together for a couple of years, like since 2017. So Coach Alex helped me to conquer the 2017 Worlds, not just myself, but also uh, Ato Jiu Jitsu in general. It was the first year that we won Worlds overall in the adult male division. And it's great to work with him like throughout these years because he helped me a lot like to get more and more titles, you know, uh -huh. uh, not only myself, but also the champions from Atos headquarters. It's amazing. So we're excited to bring this to you and let's get to it. Close. Pretty good height. So we're gonna be uh, in the rack, and the first thing we're gonna do is that barbell B stance squat. Mm -hmm. Right, it's an exercise that's really, really good for developing like a combat base or something that's specific to changing levels in wrestling. So let's hop up to the bar. All right, coach. Generally, if the bar is about like the top of your armpit, it's a pretty good height for anything like a back squat, and we're gonna load this up just like a back squat. What we're gonna try to do here is keep as much weight as we can on that lead foot. We're gonna turn that back he uh, toe out a little bit so that it's pointed out, yep. We're gonna keep a ton of weight on that lead leg as we get nice and deep into a squat. Excellent. And for today, we're gonna do three sets of six. There we go. Because it was just a warm up, go ahead and get right into that set. Another thing that Andre is doing very well at the bottom, he's having his knee track to the outside of the foot, which is ideal. We don't want to let it collapse inward as we go. We really want to keep that knee out. Cool. So we're going to go through a single arm uh, dumbbell bench press. It's really common for people to want to do unilateral exercises for the lower body, but we're gonna have a chance now to do it for the upper body. Something else that you'll notice if you give this a try is that you're gonna really feel uh, your abs working across your body to stabilize and prevent you from rolling off the bench as you use one arm. So we're gonna get set up. Um, we'll start nice and light for you. So like, I don't know, 120 pounds? <laughs> no, of course. <laughs> Let's start with a 50 and then we'll ramp up from there. So you're gonna get set like you would normally. You're gonna start with it right at your hip and you're gonna roll back and get it into position. Now, something that's gonna be different from a regular dumbbell bench, you're gonna have your feet a bit wider to prevent you from uh, falling side to side and you're gonna bring your non-target arm after you get set up, you're gonna bring that non-target arm out to the side. Yep, so lay back. You can bring it up to the top so it's safer, yeah. And then from here, make a fist and bring that arm out to the side, good. Go ahead and keep that elbow somewhat close to your body as you come down, yep about 45 degrees, nice and deep, a little deeper. Good, and back up. Excellent. How many reps from failure was that? Um, maybe like five to eight. Okay, so let's just go to a 55 and then we'll leave that as our, uh, as our working set. When I'm here, coach, do I need to keep my head off the bench or can I put it on? That's a really good question. It depends on the person, right? Mm -hmm. What I want to see is I want to see that your shoulder blades are staying retracted despite the fact that we're pushing. A cue I use with a lot of our athletes is like, if you're long like me, you know when you get the gi check? Yeah, yeah. And you, don't, you have to straighten your elbows, right? But you don't want to push here yeah. and fail the gi check. You want to keep it back. Now for most people, they're going to keep that shoulder position better if their head stays back, right? Because if we stay a little bit extended through the spine, it's easier to keep the shoulder blades back. So if you keep your head out, like? Well, there's a difference though. As people start to get more muscular, right? When they start to have like slabs of meat here that physically push them off the bench, you'll start to see the head lift despite a good shoulder position. So for you, your head's coming up a little bit, but you're not losing that shoulder position. And you see the same thing in like the heavier uh, power lifters, mm -hmm. right? When the guys are really, really big, you'll see their head come up, but they won't come forward with the shoulders. They're keeping their shoulders back. It's just that it's just the muscle lifting them off the bench. You're too big for the exercise. Yeah, not much. <laughs> I, I did both ways, right, mm -hmm. when I was doing it. And I felt like when my head was off the bench, mm -hmm. 
I felt like my neck, you know, like more. Oh, like not in a good way? No, no, in a good way. Like, oh, okay. just like working my working. neck. Yeah, yeah. just, and in Jiu Jitsu, don't fight with the head on the floor. All For the, sure. So your head is always off the mat. For sure, so there's a level of specificity too. Yeah. We just don't want to go so far up that it affects our shoulders. And your shoulders were in a good position the whole time. Okay, there's left, uh, what do you say, coach? Level of a specific way? Well, there's a degree of specificity. I like that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Coach Alex. <laughs> <laughs> specific, uh, what? Specificity. Uh, specificity. Yes. I need to use the specificity <laughs> on my glasses. I need to well, speak no. more like scientifically. It's just the glasses, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. I just need to use more the specificity, what? Specificity. Yeah, specificity. That's right. It's a good go. word. All right. Specificity. Are we ready? Bunda. Bunda, okay. Yep. Brazilian butt. Okay, so the barbell hip thrust is oftentimes overlooked by uh, by male individuals just for whatever reason. They don't they don't generally get too amped up to like train their glutes. But bunda, especially because the hip is often um, like the breaking point in a lot of submissions. Um, there's a huge degree of specificity with uh, with the hip thrust and how it relates to different submissions and ev even other ones that you might not expect, right? Something like a rear naked choke. That's not purely, you know, you're not purely choking with the arms. You're, you know, if you have hooks in, you're using, you're driving your hips into the guy. You know, you're trying to flatten him out as best you can while your arms do that work. So I think that there's a ton of finishing power that's really left on the table if this isn't a motion that we're training at least sometimes as a jiu-jitsu athlete. Cool, today we're doing three sets of six here. When I go up, I don't go with my head. Correct. Cool. So super light, right? How many more reps do you think you could have done there? Uh, I could do like maybe between 12, 15 more reps. On top? Okay, cool. Now, even though it's not listed as a pause on this day, we're going to add little pauses. It's never a mistake on a hip thrust to pause at the top. We're going to get a little bit more activation from the glutes. And if we look at the specificity and transfer to jujitsu, oftentimes when we look at something like an arm bar, a knee bar, anything where we're using the hips uh, to, to try to finish a position. Sure, it's nice if you get a quick tap, but sometimes you have to hold that position for an extended period, find the right angle for it. Yeah. So doing the same thing here is gonna uh, allow us to train that muscle in that very similar capacity. We are gonna add one thing. This isn't necessarily in the program, but Bunda. oftentimes this can be really beneficial for jujitsu athletes as well. So you can stay right there. So we're gonna add a loop around both your knees, right? So as you do this next set, you're gonna be driving out against that loop the whole time, right? Our glutes don't just extend the hip, they also abduct and externally rotate. Mm -hmm. And especially in jujitsu, you, your glutes burn a little yeah. bit? Yeah. <laughs> Bunda. But especially in jujitsu, right? If you're able to pin my knees together, man, you're gonna pass my guard every yeah, time, yeah, right? Yeah. So the ability to keep the knees apart is really, really important to be yeah. able to retain guard. What is the name of this muscle? It's part of your glute. Bunda. It's your glute meat. Oh, it's the glute? Yep. Okay. Because you have the abduction and... Adduction, adduction. is like your adductor group, yeah. And abduction, yep. So Dang. it's this here. Yep, it's part of the upper glute. Bunda out on the side there. So if I'm fighting someone, I look their butt, their butt <laughs> is like, <laughs> it's like a, I call like a draw butt, you know? Like a draw, like, it looks like, <laughs> <somebody> like <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it's like flat. I say, okay, I can smash those legs. <laughs> <laughs> but if they have like round, big butt, bunda. like it's gonna be hard for It's gonna me. be a tough okay. guard, okay, yeah. Okay, all right, I got Man. you. But usually like guys that has like flat butt, I would say, right? Like. <laughs> Um, they have good flexibility. You know, if you're at a bar and a guy's getting all, you know, all loud, first you see if he has cauliflower ear and then you see... His butt. Yeah, his butt. Bunda. Cool, so now we're gonna go uh, to a superset between lat pull down and a pull up iso hold. We're gonna be training a few things here. Everything up until this point has been very strength specific. Now we're gonna be adding in a little bit of isometric strength and we're also gonna be doing some relative strength, you know, relative to your body weight on the iso hold. And we're gonna be doing it in a fatigued state. So we're gonna start with 15 reps here. This is probably a bit light for Andre. 
but it's good for us to start. We're gonna start from a nice, fully extended position, yeah, and then pull all the way down to the chest. Excellent, getting that full range of motion. And something he's doing very well here is he's keeping his spine a bit extended so that as he finishes, he's finishing with the upper back and really using those muscles to complete the pull. Nice, so we're gonna go straight over to the pull-up hold. And here, what grip we use doesn't really matter. We just wanna make sure that we can get those elbows in close to the body and we're gonna hold it as long as we can, right to it. Yep, and he's just gonna hold this position. Uh, generally, to track progress, we're gonna be running time here. Now, another thing that you'll notice as you start to get into this, if you can do this pull-up hold for a really long time after the lat pull-down, we probably didn't go heavy enough on the lat pull-down. If you do this fresh, you're probably gonna get a minute, minute plus, Yeah. right? But we wanna be pushing so hard here that you can't even come close to that. Oh, okay, so you... Ideally, 15 seconds, oh. 10 seconds. Oh, okay. So just like everything else, when we're doing a sandbag carry, we want it to transfer to the mats as much as possible. So uh, I'm not gonna tell you exactly how to grip it. I want you to choose the way that will translate best to your game. So if you find yourself doing body lock positions, mostly with like an S grip, then feel free to do the S grip on uh, the bag. If you prefer to be here or here, do whatever you generally do when you get to an actual body lock. Okay. You're gonna carry it for about a minute and a half, you put it down for about a minute and a half and pick it back up again. And we'll do that for three rounds. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and pick that up. For sure. You, know, you go like, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I feel like it's more specific here. Yeah. Ooh, back hard. to the specificity, right? Specificity, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Exactly. Huh. I can breathe. I can breathe. <laughs> you gotta watch it. 30 more seconds. And time, we can leave it there. Yeah. Nice. Guys, thanks for watching. Uh, this was the first vlog at Electrum Performance with Professor Andre Galvao. Uh, please, you know, give him a follow on, uh, on social media. He always posts some great stuff and uh, he's got some pretty interesting announcements going on right now as well. Yes, we're gonna have all these programs on Atos BJJ On Demand is our new platform and you guys are gonna be able to download the program and you guys can improve your strength and conditioning with Electrum Performance right there as well. Oh, nice, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> is this slow motion right now? Yeah. So if you talk, it's gonna be like, whatever. <laughs> I've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> okay, I would say like, oh, drag off all, and that's it. <laughs> Stupid airplane. Yeah, I know. I'm waiting, all right? Come on, dude. What else do I say? What else do I say? See you on the next video. See you in the... Don't forget to like, subscribe, and go f*** yourself. We got a lot of juicy pumps cooking. Juicy pumps cooking. Juicy pumps cooking. Juicy pumps cooking.